And Mark New sat down with Copia founder Kamal Ahmad to ask a few more questions. He began by asking the 26-year-old entrepreneur how she came up with the idea. I was born in actually in Lahore, Pakistan. And it was a little too conservative for my family, so they moved us to Las Vegas, Nevada, and that's where I grew up. And then I, you know, when I was turned 18, I went to essentially like naval summer orientation uh, to join the U.S. Navy, and then I started school at Berkeley. And really, it was my tw in 2012 actually that my story with Copia began. And I was walking down the street, uh, down Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley, and I encountered a homeless man begging for food. And you know, that's pretty common in the Bay Area, just having so much homelessness around. But something about him compelled me to stop and invite him to join me for lunch. And during lunch, just as you're sitting across from me, he was sitting across from me, and he was just scarfing down his food. So he was really hungry. It wasn't, you know, a ploy or anything. And, you know, in between bites, he told me his story. He said, you know, I just came back from my second tour in Iraq. I have been waiting for a while for my benefits to kick in. I don't have any money, and I haven't eaten in three days. And so that hit me like a ton of bricks because I was a few months away from deploying as an officer in the U.S. Navy. And so I'm looking at this guy who could very well be my future. You know, he went from the battlefield of Iraq, giving the most selfless sacrifice he could for our country just to come home to our country to face another battle, which was hunger and homelessness. And then to add insult to injury, right across the street from where he and I were having lunch, Berkeley's dining hall was throwing away thousands of pounds of food every day. And so it was this very stark reality of those who have and waste and those who are in need and starve, and those two people right across the street from each other. And what I've realized over time is that this is not just emblematic of Berkeley, but something that is emblematic across the world. And you know, I think that's why we deem it as the world's dumbest problem, because in a world of so much abundance, hunger shouldn't exist. And so, you know, I decided that I wanted to, I didn't want to take my commission and I wanted to serve my country a different way. Have you faced a lot of stereotypes in the Navy and as an entrepreneur? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, my last deployment was uh, 196 guys, five girls. I was the only Pakistani, you know, most of those guys have never seen a, a brown woman in their lives. But I think it's also something that really strengthened me, right? So people are always, as an entrepreneur or as someone who is very young in, in the military, people are always going to underestimate you. And really that's, I mean, that's been a fuel to my fire. And I think whenever someone says I can't do something or I shouldn't do something, I mean, that's really, that's really what encourages me to keep going, you know? And I think that this was another, like when I wanted to donate food and people would say, no, this is illegal or, you know, you can't do that or this isn't something that can scale. I mean, this is really what I want to prove them wrong because this is something that we can solve in our lifetime. You know, it's not a lack of food. It's a, it's a, re it's a problem of distribution. It sounds like a great idea, but I'm sure many businesses are concerned that they might be sued. Right, right, right. And actually, this is what Berkeley's Dining Hall said, too. You know, I asked them, you know, what do you do with their excess food? And they said, we throw it away. And I said, why do you throw it away? And they said, because we don't want to be held liable. And I was like, yeah, you know, because homeless high-powered attorneys are just standing by to sue you. And I think really one of the issues is that there's, so 97% 90, of the reasons why businesses don't already donate their food is because of fear of liability and transportation constraints. So these are the two things that we really addressed straight up uh, because we didn't want to, we wanted to encourage businesses to donate their food. And actually in 1996, Bill, uh, Bill Clinton passed the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act, which protects all donors, regardless of whether you're an organization, corporation, or individual from any liability, as long as you practice due diligence and avoid mass gross negligence. And so it is a professional food recovery service, Copia is, and so we handle all of it. We handle the food recovery. Our technology man matches the amount and type of food to the nearest shelters that are in need. Our drivers pick up the food, they drop it off. Uh, we weigh all of the food, we document all of the, uh, the information. So businesses get to see how many people did they fed, what organizations got the food. They get photos and testimonials from the people that were fed, you know, along with environmental impact reports, you know, how much carbon was offset, and you know, what was their total tax savings. So there is a huge economic benefit for them to do the right thing. You sure sound like you want to make a profit. I'm not here to play small. I'm here to solve a global problem. And unfortunately, nonprofits just cannot scale to that to that to fill that need. And as a for-profit company, that I think that it's, it's for-profit companies, it's businesses that really are going to solve these massive, intractable problems that have existed, you know, throughout our our lifetimes. And really, what's 
amazing about Copia is the more people we feed, the more money we make, the more money we make, the more people we feed, the more people we employ. And so it's a very great virtuous cycle. So we have recovered uh, over 800,000 pounds of food. We fed almost 700,000 people. We'll feed a million people this year. And we want to create playbooks for the Bay Area, right? So we want to understand how does this, once we deeply penetrate the San Francisco market, the Silicon Valley market, the East Bay market, you know, what does this really scale to look like? And then copy and paste this in cities nationally and then eventually globally.